Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. Back again with another video. This time we are changing the Affymetrix input file to Plink files. Let's jump straight into it. So this is how an Affymetrix, uh, well, final report uh, looks like. I am not sure if, it called, if it's called final report, but anyway, if you are getting your Affymetrix raw files, they look like something like this. This is an anonymized file which is uh, well will be used for this uh, exercise or at least uh, for the purpose of showing you how to change this file format to a file format that is accept acceptable by Plink so you can do many other things with it that Plink usually does. So uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, we have a few well, I have also a drawing tool here. So we have a few lines here that are, well, just a kind of an introductory things. I X'd out quite a bit here because just to take it or make it anonymous, but kind of the file format is that each line is a uh, snip and then the columns are the animals or the individuals. Anyway, the genotypes are in, in this case in an AB format and they are written together without a space. So this uh, file has quite a bit of uh, columns as you will see. So it has, uh, well, uh, 90 animals. Uh, oh, we are here. Okay, so this is animal 90 in this anonymized form is uh, the, the last one here. And then there is quite a number of other, well, uh, columns. Some other very important columns for us will be the chromosome ID and uh, well, one of the other ones that actually the SNP ID is the first uh, first column. And then there is also the start, which is also the, the, the position of the SNP, which will be very important for us. So we will load basically this file into R and change it to the Plink format. One thing I just want to highlight they, I, there was one thing that I did as a manual edit for this uh, file and this call modified kind of this, uh, this, this word where in two words in the original file. So there was a, a space here that I deleted because all the other column names are kind of either camel case or some kind of a solution that it doesn't have a space in it except this call modified which would then cause problems when loading into R. So I changed that one manually. So anyway, our task is to change this one to a Plink file. So we are back in R and uh, the first thing that we do as usual is we define the working directory where this uh, file is located. So for me is, is this one with this, uh, well, Genomics Bootcamp and AFI file to PED file. Well, I will upload this uh, file into my GitHub page so you can download this example file and do exactly this exercise yourself as well. Kind of a practice for a real situation where you will have your own raw Affymetrix file that you want to change to pet files. Well, as I mentioned here, so there is a warning line here so that I change manually this call modified to call modified without this space and uh, well we read it in with the tidy versus read underscore table function so i run these first few lines and well this is what we did we read in this uh, row file into r this is actually surprisingly quite close already to a plink file a very specific Plink file, mind you, it is a so-called TPED file. So you might remember there is a very classical file uh, that is the PED file that has as many lines, as many individuals you have, and as many columns or twice as, as many columns, as many SNPs you have. Now this is an opposite one or a transposed PED file. So in here, the individuals are the columns and the lines are the SNPs. So we need to change that uh, and well adapt it a little bit so it is a regular tpad file or transposed pet file 
So if you check the TPAD file on the Plink webpage, it has this uh, short description that basically what it needs is a two N plus four fields and where these four fields are the actually the map file. And well, you might remember the map file has exactly four columns. That is the chromosome, the SNP name, the Morgan position, and the column number four is the base pair coordinate of that particular SNP. So these are the four first four columns for the TPAD file. That and then we need uh, two N uh, columns that are the alleles for each of the individuals. So this is exactly what we are going to do. We do not have a Morgan uh, position right now, but we create that with a mutate statement and we just put all the Morgan positions to zero. So that is the first thing that we do. Now you might remember in the row file, and actually you don't need to remember that because that we have also in here. So all the uh, alleles are together like this without space. This is not good because they are just uh, well, occupying one column right now and we need them to occupy two columns. So what we do is we replace them with exactly the same just with the space in between. So this is what we what we do and we replace uh, well uh, columns number 2 to 91 with these mutate statements. This, in my case in this very specific case is 2 uh, to 91 because we have uh, 90 individuals. So we start at column two and then we end up with uh, column 91 here. So this is uh, animal 90 and column 91. So these we need to replace accordingly. Also the missing genotypes in the Affymetrix file are shown as no call or basically this is, the, this is how, it, how it looks like there. So we replace it with zero, zero. So this is the standard Plink formatting or coding for the missing files. So when this is done, we, we basically select the columns that we need. And that is the chromosome ID that is in the row file already, the probe set ID that is basically the SNP name, the Morgan position that we created, this is just a column of zeros, and the start, well, the column name start is actually the base pair position and then we uh, well select um, columns 2 to 91 we do this replacement and we write out with the write delim statement the tpet file and that is most of the work done already again if you read the manual on the plink web page it will say that it requires one more file that is the so-called tfum file, which is basically just a fun file. So it's just very much the same, but it's called tfum in this case. So for this, the most important thing is the individual ID that is saved in the column names for this, uh, for this file. So what we will need to do is extract the IIDs or the individual IDs as the column names from columns 2 to 91 for this particular example. That's because we have 90 individuals in these columns. Depending on your specific situation, you might also use some very helpful tidyverse options. And that is when selecting the columns, you might use the starts, starts with function or the ends with function that uh, well you can select columns all the columns that starts or end with a specific expression and now nothing else remains than to put together the fun file so it starts with the family id in my case i selected or opted for an expression gbc but of course you can use any expression that you see fit then uh, well i defined uh, the sire as zero or unknown, them as unknown, sex as unknown, and phenotype as unknown for this particular example. With a bit of a rearrangement, there is the now the setting that the IID goes after the FID, so we have the conventional 
structure of the fun file that is the family id individual id sire dem sex and phenotype and when we have this we just write it out again with the write delim statement once this is done we have already the tped file on our hard disk the tfun file on our hard disk so what we can do is use the plink option dash dash t file reading these ones in and using for example the dash dash recode option to create ped and map files of course if you want binary ped files you can use dash dash make bed or any other plink possibility that you want in this particular case because we have a cattle data then we also use the dash dash cow option so this was it for today i hope you find this tutorial useful if so of course a like on this video is much appreciated from my side i thank you for your time and i wish you a very nice day